is better with tea than a heartfelt talk. Even better when the talk is infused with technology and training. Hi everyone, this is Tea Talks. I'm Pranjali Lehri. Hi, this is Nikita Shivasta. And today we are talking about management buy-in for successful employee skilling. Before we talk about seeking and getting sign-off from your leadership and top management team on your learning and training interventions, let's look at the need for employee skilling. From an employee point of view, the ability to upskill helps me stay competent, productive, and motivated. It also shows me that the organization is invested in my career growth, which means I have more opportunities for promotion and more opportunities to stick around and less temptation to switch my job. It also increases my morale and my brand loyalty and helps me stay with the company for a longer time. Upskilling helps organization in better succession planning. Skilled employees are self-driven and they do not require much of supervision and guidance. In that way, management can focus on more pressing areas rather focusing on skilling issues. For these skilling programs to work, they need to be based on a foundation that's conducive to continuous skilling, which is where we need to look at the key pillars for employee skilling programs. There are four that we need to consider. The four pillars of employee skilling programs are learning culture, employer brand, availability of tools and content, and last but not the least, management buy-in. Let's go through all of them one by one. We'll start with learning culture. Learning culture is that often unseen and unwritten set of guidelines and rules that dictate how employees perceive learning opportunities, how open and willing they are to adopting it into their day-to-day -day life. Let's come to employer brand. Employer brand is what the employees perceive of you. It is not what your stakeholders think. It is not what your consumers think, not even what the outside audiences think of you. It is what your own internal employees think of you as a brand. And a key part of this employer brand is learning and development. Because normally, as an employee, I perceive an organization to be better than the other if it is invested in my career and my growth through training interventions. One of the important pillars of the employee skill programs is the tools and the content available in the market. There are many tools and content that are available in the market to engage employees, like learning management system, assessment tools to identify the skill gaps, and the plug and play content to improve the competencies of the employees. The good part is the availability of high quality content and the digital delivery modes helps employees to have a continuous learning at ease. Effective skill programs quickly translate to improved ROI, productivity, and employee satisfaction. The next important pillar of employee skilling program is management buying. Management are the right people who know the specific job requirements and also the business needs. So they are the right person to plan any specific employee skilling program. Management can easily define how each of the team members can contribute to the organization goals. After all, it is the business leader who defines the strategy and culture of the organization. If any organization need to have the culture of continuous learning, they definitely have to have a buy-in in the skilling programs. You can now see why management buy-in, the last pillar, is so critical for the success of your employee skilling program. Because it's quite simple. You can have the best piece of tech, you can have all the content in the world, you can have the most encouraging learning culture and your employer brand, but if you don't have the top management backing you up or even leading by example, it can deprioritize MND in your organization's agenda thereby sabotaging the success of your company itself. This management by the programs have more real business impact and they are aligned to business goals. Any initiatives that are not backed by management fizzles out even before they start. There is no proper budgets if you don't have the management buy-in. The management buy-in supports the program to drive the right results 
have the expectation. Employee skilling should be focused on producing tangible and targeted results for the business. The key is to treat it seriously and consider it as a capital investment and make it result driven. First and foremost, focus on value, not on cost. Now, while it's important to consider the pricing of the learning platform, all the tools and digital tech and the content that you need for actual training delivery, just focusing on it too narrowly can undermine the actual impact and value that the training intervention can bring to your company. So a suggestion is to align it to your company's goals. So look at areas or look at the improvement outcomes that will happen because of the training and skilling interventions that you do for your company. The end outcome could be increase in productivity or decrease in training cost. It could also be increase in compliance or it could be increase in reach or scale. It could be all of these or it could be one of these. It could be a combination of these. Whatever it is, it has to be aligned to the end objectives of the company. In case it's the first time that you're subscribing to a learning platform or even to content, it would be wise to go and look at relevant case studies from your peers and your competitors and see how they are using digital tech and tools in their training interventions. Using those use cases and case studies can give you a benchmark to expect the value that you don't have at hand right away. The next tip is to demonstrate, not just state. What this means is that you need to find ways to not just show the benefits in theory because everything looks great when it's on paper, but you need to connect the dots between theory and practical. And the best way to do this is to identify objectives or KPIs and other metrics that matter to you and then see how your training or learning interventions are able to map into those. So example, from the previous point, if your job is to increase the productivity, you need to find different metrics that connect the dots between productivity and the training interventions. It could be in terms of what content works the best for your particular learner group or set of learners, or it could be doing a before after analysis of the productivity of your employees based on how they perform their jobs before the onset of the training intervention and after it was done. You can also define multiple milestones in between to have the actual tracking to show the growth or the progress of the training intervention and productivity aligned to it. The last tip, though it sounds a bit counterintuitive and contradictory, is to get employee buy-in. Yes, you heard it right. To get management buy-in, it is critical to have your employees on board too. It's a clear picture, right? If your employees are excited and enthused about doing something, if they really have the love and they see the need for learning in their own career development, it is then natural for management to comply to that and ensure that they supply with all the necessary tools, um, the techniques and the methods to help the employees navigate through their careers better. This is me, Pranjali Lehri, signing off. See you next time. This is Nikita Shivastu signing off. Thank you.